Linda Pinizzato. She's not your typical realtor. She's your real estate counselor, teacher, and advisor. Whether it's a house, townhome, or condo, when you're ready, she's your negotiator. With 34 years of experience, Linda guarantees that you have the real estate knowledge you need to make the right decisions. Call Linda Pinizzato at Sutton Group Quantum Realty, 416-561-7373, or visit her at lindapinizzato.com. Hello there. Welcome back. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato of The Condo Expert. And today we're chatting here at the Hayes FM and having a fabulous conversation with Oliver Desmarteau. Now, he is the communications manager for Audio Cinefilms, and which is a movie representative. And, you know, you know what really amazes me, Oliver, is that, you know, every time we turn around, we uh, turn on the radio or the television. And what do we see? I mean, we see actors and you know, and we're always looking at even these uh, magazines that are out there. The National Enquirer, I don't know if a lot of people believe what's in there, but the bottom line is, is wages, the wages of actors are always under scrutiny. It's always a big conversation out there. I mean, you get the premier actors that are making the bulk of the money, but then you also get stunt people and, and you know, the behind the scenes people that obviously are dedicated to their job as well, although they don't have the recognition. And they certainly don't get that elaborate income. But the cost to put this movie together is astronomical. It is indeed. Very well spoken. <laughs> so, well, that's the thing. So, you know, you think about that and you, know, and you have to have a successful movie. Because, you know, you also read a lot of times at how, you know, there might have been a, a story out there that was just fantastic. Maybe the producers and the directors thought, you know, the producer went and got the funding for it, the directors got it all together, the storytelling's put together, but it didn't do as well as they expected. Mm -hmm. So if it didn't do as well as they expected in the movie theater, they're really, really depending on home use to pick up that revenue, wouldn't they? Well, yes, indeed, of course. I mean, it's a business, right? Of course. We, we, we've mentioned it earlier. So, um, of course, they, they try to make some profit out of it. Well, exactly. We cannot, we cannot blame them for that, can we? No, no, absolutely. And that's why the Copyright Act is so important for them. Because, I mean, if they don't have, I mean, granted, you know, you can make more of a profit on one movie, less of a profit of another, and think, okay, fine, you're evening out. But that's not really the case. That's not good business practice. Absolutely. So, absolutely. yeah. So, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm going beyond. I, I totally understand where ACF would have to be as far as trying to get the word out about the licensing. Because without the licensing, all of this kind of pirating is going on. And at the end of the day, it does actually hurt the movie industry itself. Yes, absolutely. And once again, especially considering the very low cost of our license, when you see that you can actually contribute is such a healthy industry in Canada. I mean, you're doing your part as a, for this business, and you make sure that you know, all of the thousands of jobs that are related to this uh, industry are being kept alive. Well, you know, I think that's one thing. Like our government, I mean, we have so many acts. I think that if somebody sat down one day and actually went through the provincial you know, register of all the different acts we have between the Condominium Act and then uh, the Accessibility Act and Health and Safety Act, and then you get into yeah. Copyrights Act and, and Privacy Act. And, right. you know, I mean, we have, and, and these are all legislative governance to make sure that people understand what their guidelines are. I mean, their Transportation Act, uh, you know, all of these are, are very important, and that's what makes our country, yeah. you know, survive the way that we are in a democratic society. I and, absolutely you know, agree. Yeah, and, and, you know, and just to, to make sure that, you know, there is a level of protection. And, you know, I, I think right now, to be honest with you, the first report, as you know, I'm the founder of the Condo Owners Association of Ontario. And uh, right after this phone call, I'm going to be putting in a report to our ministry because they've really missed out on the Copyright Act. There has been no conversation about it whatsoever in the new Condo Act review. 
yet we could be putting condo corporations at a huge risk of being potentially fined up to $20,000. But over and above that, we're not supporting good governments, governance and legislation adhering to the Copyright Act, especially if it's something that is implemented and, and reflects common elements of condominiums. And I really appreciate that gesture. I mean, uh, yes, indeed, in the new Condo Act, I believe that um, it is up to stage two or three right now. But you're right that nowhere was it mentioned that copyrights have to be respected as well in the common areas of condos. So there are many, many, many layers of regulations. But unfortunately, uh, it missed out on that very copyright issue. You know, and two, you know, if you think about it, you know what's really amazing about this conversation is if I look at the target audience, you know, the target audience for, I would say, young professionals, you know, I mean, granted, I'm not taking away, you know, other people that enjoy their movies and so on, but the target audience of, especially if I think of downtown Toronto, the target yeah. audience in downtown Toronto are young professionals living in condominiums. And we've already identified that there's 1.3 million condo owners living in condominiums. And that's a lot. Exactly. <laughs> a like 587,000 condo units and half of construction today are condominiums. Right. You see where I'm coming from? So I'm thinking, oh my God. And, you know, it, it seems like somebody out there missed the boat if copyrights information hasn't been provided to property managers and instilled in the Condominium Act. Because right. look at the target audience. It's huge. It, it is huge, and the issue is huge, and the consequences are huge. Yet, the amount just to comply with the law is infinitely small when you compare it with the usual condo fees that we, are, we can witness across Toronto. So, I mean, I know that 50 cents goes a long way when it comes to licensing in order to comply with the Copyright Act. So, uh, once again, they make sure that they do everything illegally, mm -hmm. and then they contribute to such a big part of Canada's economy. Oh, absolutely. You know, we want to keep our movie people here, man. We want to keep seeing Canadian movies coming in, too. Not to say that we don't want the U.S. and, you know, worldwide movies oh, no, as well. Okay. You know, but we do have to honor a little bit of Canadian flavor. So, you now you've got, now ACF has a newsletter. I see that you've got one December 2013. Yes, so, it was sent out this morning. <laughs> yes, well, there, I'm right on top of it then, aren't I? <laughs> so how do people maybe give a rundown here? What's in the newsletter and where should they sign up on it? Basically, our newsletter is an information tool to let know our customers and to-be customers as well uh, about the releases that we have access to right now. So as you can see there, we have promoted the movie Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2, which we have in pre-release format. From December 15th. So, and then we have the other upcoming pre releases. Could they be Frozen or Delivery Man or even uh, Thor 2? So, basically, we, we give information about the releasing schedule of our upcoming pre releases and it keeps our client uh, informed about what's coming on. So, but, but you don't offer any type of services for them to go online with your company and, uh, and be able to, like that kind of thing? They get, they're going to then rent these movies from external sources? When it comes to pre-releases, right. uh, as I mentioned, they are exclusive to us, so we have to supply our clients with the actual DVD of the film. Okay. So, it, it would be considered a rental, so we ship them to uh, we ship them the movie. Uh, they show it our film, and then they return it to us. Wow, that's great! So now, so what would happen then? So I guess a condo corporation would go online, register their corporation and their information, and so on with your company. Yes. And they would check off which release that they want to um, order. Yes, absolutely. They would have a look at our release schedule. They would okay. give us a phone call, and they would let us know which film they would they wish to play, and we'll just help them out. Okay, perfect. And then it gets so it gets because you're located in Montreal. Yes, we are. Right. So I guess it gets Pure Later Courier or or Canada Post or somehow or how does it yes, get? Yes, exactly. Okay. We, we use delivery services. Um, the delivery to Toronto is actually very fast. Oh, fantastic! That's yes. great. So that means that every condominium can actually, because of the way that this is being handled, it seems like it would be relatively easy for any condominium to start establishing a movie viewing night, or maybe a couple, a week. 
maybe a couple of weeks. And once yeah, again, it sounds our, very our, easy. Our, light, <laughs> our, our annual movie license covers unlimited showings of regular films, which are movies that are already available on DVD. So on an, on an annual basis, if they wish to have a movie night every single night, they can. And when it comes to pre-releases, as they are being considered special rentals, they just give us a phone call and uh, we'll be able to, uh, to help them out and uh, set everything for them. And so, so basically, they register in, they get their licensing, they establish that all. Now, do they have to post the license? Does the license actually have to be visible inside the room so that anybody that would be going in there would realize that, yes, this, uh, or like maybe in property management somewhere would probably be the best place? It, it would be a good way, yes, but it's not mandatory. So we do send in an official license in a paper format via regular mail, and uh, if, if they want to keep it and they want to show it, it's up to them. But they, there's, it's not mandatory to do so. Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. You know, I was looking at a letter here that you had regarding copyright modernization act. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I noticed here that, uh, yes, that was actually quite interesting, and that was coming from the, uh, the Ministry of Industry and the Minister of State Agriculture. It was actually the uh, Heritage Minister. Oh, okay. The Industry Minister. So, yes, uh, they, they have both modernized the copyright law. It was passed recently. And what did you have modernized? What, what was the key point, rather than me going through this? Maybe give me an overview or give the audience an overview of what you thought was really important and why that this, uh, these recommendations were put forward. Well, that's a huge task that you're asking me. Because really? Was that complicated? <laughs> That this law was immense. It covered many, many, many aspects of copyright. It would be nearly impossible for me to describe everything that happened there unless you authorize me to take about two days of your show. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, on, uh, well, then it the just, hand. all it does is it tells everybody now how complicated the entire thing is. Yes, exactly. So yes. we, um, but basically, you know, the, the copyright law had very important mentions uh, when it comes to uh, different public showings and different markets and etc. So, um, but once again, all the, the information is on our website. And, you know, I'd rather let uh, our listeners go directly to see if they're interested in reading such documentation. Well, you know, I think absolutely. Uh, you know, it's interesting because I think that kind of thing, I mean, there's no doubt that they have, you know, the copyrights here and the Modernization Act, and they, they most likely will have the same similar types of copyrights down like in other countries. I would think they have that same type of standard down in the United States, for instance. I, I guess, condom, well, I don't know, would you know that if condominiums, I, I gather they must have that same guideline in condominiums in the U.S. In the U.S. they do, yes. Because I know, you know, right now, the uh, I've been working this morning, actually, I was speaking to Randy Lippert, and he's the criminology professor for the University of Windsor. And they're doing a huge study on condominiums and the differences like in Toronto and New York and uh, Arizona. So I'll have to mention this to him because it's probably something that they should, uh, or I should introduce you both to one another because I think that this oh, could sure. be a, another side of interest of, of trying to get it right, you know, within condominiums, like across mm -hmm. North America. Yes, indeed. I'd be delighted to. But once again, I mean, I don't want to scare the listeners with all these facts and, you know, all this, uh, these huge texts about law and etc. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to help them and to make it as easy as possible for them to comply with the law. So I really want to insist on the fact that, you know, they're just one phone call away from having legal movie presentations into their screening rooms. Well, that, that's the key. You know, that's the key part. I mean, it's no different from, you know, say, for instance, the Traffic Act. I mean, we all know that if we're on the highway and we're speeding, that we're not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> and, you know, right. all of a sudden we could find ourselves in court. We don't really sit down and read through the entire Traffic Act or how it's been modernized and how it changed or this or that. We just know that it exists and we're supposed to be abiding by the signs that we see. I think that, you know, just the general overview that, you know, it's been identified that this act is in place and that condo corporations should be complying to it if they're planning on, you know, showing any kind of movies in common areas in their buildings that it would be really important for them to, to do it properly. And Absolutely. don't risk the corporation. I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, why would anybody? Nobody wants to, uh, you know, it's due diligence, right? But you can't yeah. have it unless you are, have awareness. 
Well, as, as you brought, I mean, it's due diligence. And once again, ever since they've, they've invested so much money in having state-of-the-art screening rooms, I mean, it's a nonsense that the very products that will be showing there does not enjoy the same treatment. Well, that's it. That's the other side as well. So do you think that, uh, what's your prediction for the future? I mean, where, do, actually, I, I guess being in Montreal, did you know that the uh, Condo Act review is, uh, they're actually preparing a Condo Act in, uh, in Quebec right now. They actually didn't even have one for a number of years. Not at the same uh, scale, may I address it that way, but we do have a lot of condo towers being built in Montreal as well. So, you know, more and more condos mean, uh, you know, regulations have to be created in order to, uh, to make sure that everything goes down properly. So, yes, we have a lot of condos uh, being built in here. So uh, definitely something has to be done. Well, you know, if you get, if you get to the other side and, and you get away from the legalities in our conversation, we go into the lighthearted side of our conversation. What a fabulous way to get people in condominiums to get to know one another. Like the social side of uh, having movie nights, doing it properly, and just, you know, making friendships through the building. That's actually really nice. And that's a very and having nice it, thing. Yeah. I'm very happy that you bring this up because, you know, when it comes to building communities or, you know, just gathering families together to enjoy a very nice show, I mean, nothing does it better than having a nice movie. Well, exactly, and if you can see new releases, I mean, that's even more fun. You can brag to all your friends and everybody that you've been able to see it way before it even came out to the theater. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> well, it, it is, it is, absolutely, you're right. You know, so you look at the other side of it. I see that there's a video on here, but I'm not going to press the button on it, but it looks, it looks really great. <laughs> yeah, so, so have you been in this whole industry for quite some time? I'm in my fifth year right now. Really, really? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'll tell you, you're very much an expert in your field, so that's great. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show, Oliver. I think that uh, we've created a huge wealth of awareness to people, especially, you know, with Christmas coming up just around the corner. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people out there watching more and more movies, that's for sure. Absolutely. It's been a shared pleasure, and once again, thank you for uh, giving me such a beautiful opportunity. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Best to you, and happy holidays, and uh, we will do our best to uh, put the word out there, and uh, please keep in touch, too. Will do. We'd love thank to you. hear everything that's going on in the movie world. It's always a fascinating topic, that's for sure. Absolutely. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> thank well, you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. We're okay. listening to Bye. Linda Pinizzato of The Condo Expert. I was just speaking with Oliver Dismarto, and he's the communication manager for Audio Cine Films, and they are a movie representative. Now, that was such an exciting conversation. You know, I, I'm going to reflect on it slightly because I'm, I'm really taken back, you know, it, knowing so much about condominiums and governance and accountability and all the issues that we've been dealing with. Now I'm sitting here thinking, holy, do I ever have to send a quick email to the Ministry of Consumer Services and let them know that this is another topic that missed the boat and it missed the review of the Condo Act and certainly something that's very important. I don't think there's any condominiums out there that want to get hit with a $20,000 fine because uh, they haven't obeyed by the act. And, you know, which brings to reason, the Condo Owners Association, I mean, one of the big things that we put on the table is that there should be a fining process in place for non-compliance of the Condominium Act. So isn't this an interesting subject? We have fines for copyright acts, and we have fines for traffic acts, and we have fines on accessibility acts, and we have fines on health and safety act, but we have a condominium act that affects the lives of 1.3 million people, 587,000 condo units, without including the fact that over half of construction today are condominiums. So for all I know, we could be at a 1.8 million condominium owners at the blink of an eye. So what does that tell you? It tells you that we need governance and we need a condo act that has mandatory legislation. Certainly nothing like this condo office that they're putting on the table. 
The government needs to work with the Condo Owners Association. The Condo Owners need to register with the Condo Owners Association, www.coaontario.com. And let's unite all of this together so that we have a phenomenal working atmosphere in condo communities that are government regulated through proper acts with proper finding in place. Then we've got the right solution. Thank you so much for listening to Linda Pinizzato at The Condo Expert. And we'll talk to you soon. Linda Pinizzato, she's not your typical realtor. She's your real estate counselor, teacher, and advisor. Whether it's a house, townhome, or condo, when you're ready, she's your negotiator. With 34 years of experience, Linda guarantees that you have the real estate knowledge you need to make the right decisions. Call Linda Pinizzato at Sutton Group Quantum Realty, 416-561-7373, or visit her at lindapinizzato.com.